intentional about exploring the Word of God. And I want to talk today about how we keep on keeping on. How do we integrate God's Word into our lives? Because it isn't 40 days and done. This was an encouragement for you to keep reading your Bible, to dig deeper into God's Word. Jesus said, if you continue in my word, then you're really my followers. So this week, I want us to look at how do you maintain a heart for God's word? How do we integrate God's word into every part of our lives? If I could have the next slide, Carrie. The first thing we do is I build on it. In other words, I make the Bible my foundation for life. That's what Jesus talks about in Matthew 7 at the end of the Sermon on the Mount. He says, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house upon the rock. We all know this. You can have a choice to build your life on sand or to build your life on a rock. If you build your life on the rock of God's word, then you are going to have the stability of something that never changes. When the, when the winds of life blow through you and they are fierce and they are harsh, when the storms of life happen, when the trials and troubles and stresses and challenges and temptations of life come along, you will have this to hold on to. You won't be blown away. Some people, some people build their lives on shifting foundations and their lives fall apart. And I want to tell you a few things that you should not build your life on popular culture. Because you know what? The problem with popular culture is what's popular today is not going to be popular tomorrow. What's in style today is not going to be in style next week. I have clothes like that. What's cool today is not going to be cool tomorrow. That foundation, if you build it there, it's always going to be shifting. The second thing I would really encourage you not to build the foundation of your life on is tradition. A lot of people build their lives on tradition. I do it this way because I've always done it this way and I'm always going to do it this way. Tradition isn't all bad. I don't want to say that. In fact, sometimes things become a tradition because they work. But no tradition lasts forever. Traditions wear out. Traditions become obsolete and they're not valid. Even Jesus speaks to this in Mark 7. He says to a group of religious leaders, you have let go of the commands of God and are holding on to the traditions of men. I know a lot of churches are like that. They're holding on to traditions that aren't really in the Bible, but it's, it's what they've always done. Jesus says if you're doing that, then you're actually putting tradition ahead of truth. And that's not something to build your life on. The third thing you don't want to build your life on is reason. Just simple reason. We all need reason. God gave us the ability to reason, but sometimes what you think is reasonable isn't always right. When I rely on my own intellect, when I do what I've always thought, what seems reasonable to me, sometimes I'm going to make mistakes. And mistakes are not what we need to build our life on. But perhaps the most important foundation to not build your life on is emotion. 
Sometimes we let that just overwhelm us and consume us. Some people build their entire lives on emotion. If it feels good, I'm going to do it. If it doesn't feel good, I'm not going to do it. If you live your life based on your feelings, you will spend your life being manipulated by your moods. In fact, if you spend your life only doing what you want to do, most days you're not even going to get out of bed because that feels pretty good in the morning. A lot of times we're not going to get anything done if we don't do the things we don't feel like doing. So we need to build our life on the Word of God. Next slide. After you start building on the Word of God, the second thing you need to do is you need to feed on it. The Bible tells us the Word of God is spiritual food, compares it to milk and water and honey and bread and meat, the stuff that we need. Because just as we need physical food for strength, we need spiritual food for our spiritual strength. Colossians 3.16 which has been an overarching theme for these 40 days, says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Let it dwell in you. Let it move in you. Let it inhabit you, take up residence in a rich, profound, life-giving way. That's what the word is saying. Feed on it. You can feed on the word of God if you are hearing it, if you are coming to church on Sunday and if you are hearing the word of God spoken and preached, you're hearing it. But you know, I have to tell you, studies show that 95% of what we hear, we don't retain. Except for guys, then it's 105%. If we're just hearing it, we're not going to retain it. So what we need to do is use our eyes and read it. We have to actually pick it up, take it off the shelf. Just having it in your home isn't good enough. Take it off the shelf, open it up each and every day and read God's Word. And then the third way, I have to research it with my hands and share it with my mouth. Take some time Use a study Bible or a concordance. Go online and take notes as you are reading God's Word because it is in the sharing with your first hands that you start to really have it inhabit you. It's an important part of the process. But we need to then share it with others. And that's what the joy of a small group is all about because when we share God's Word with others, we are feeding them and they are feeding us as they give us their take on it. How many of you who have been in a small group or a Bible study in these last few weeks would say that you really found out a little bit more as you listened to the take that others had on it? It's really iron sharpens iron. We learn as we feed one another. But even if you're not in a group, share. Share what you read that morning with a friend or a family worker, a neighbor, or a co-worker. Hey, listen, this is what I read this morning and, and this is what it said to me. You're going to find that it sticks with you even more. But you don't need to just read it and talk about it and go on like nothing has changed in your life. What you need to do is you need to reflect on it. Go over what the Word of God said to you that morning. Spend time meditating on it. One of the best ways to do it is just to talk about it. Okay, talk about it to yourself. Okay, how many of you talk to yourself? Okay, the rest of you are lying. <laughs> so talk yourself during the day. Say, oh yeah, you know what, that's what was in my Bible reading this morning, and this, this is what it's saying to me today, and just go over it, over it again and again during your day, and you're going to find that it sinks in and seeps into you. 
And the last way you feed on the Word of God is by remembering it with not just your head, but with your heart. There's a difference because when it dwells in you richly, then it makes a difference in your lives. And I want to kind of show you what that means. So right here, I have a cup of water, really hot water. You didn't hear that. And if we are just hearing the word of God, it's like this is scripture and this is us. And if we just hear it, we're just going to dip that in. And it really doesn't make much of a difference, does it? But when we are hearing it and reading it, when we are reflecting on it and meditating on it, then it starts to seep into us. And it becomes part of who we are. Something starts to happen to my soul just as things are starting to happen with that water. The water is absorbing the color and the flavor and the aroma and the character of tea. And that's what it's like for the Word of God to dwell in you richly. You begin to absorb what it is really saying when you do these things. So we build on it and then we feed on it. And then if we really want to integrate the Word of God into our lives, we have to live by it. The Word of God is not just intended to be food for your soul. The Word of God is intended to be the standard for your living, for your life. It is the Word of God that sets the standard by which you judge everything that is of value in your life. It needs to be the standard by which you make all your decisions. It's the Word of God that will help you when you are in a crisis. The Word of God that will give you comfort when you are in despair. It's the Word of God that will give you strength when you're weak, that will give you wisdom when you're confused. It's the Word of God that will give you guidance when you're looking for direction. And it's the Word of God that will give you strength to resist, to fight against the temptations in life. Remember in Matthew 4, when Jesus was tempted by the devil in the desert? There were three times the devil came to him and tempted him, and all three times Jesus used just one weapon to defend himself. He said, it is written. He went to the word of God which was in him, which dwelled richly in him already, and we can do the same. If you want to be like Christ, you've got to defend yourself against temptation in this world by having the word of God in you. See, I want to give us a little temptation. This is, as you start to become more like Christ. It's like this tea again. This water has absorbed the color and the flavor and the aroma and the character of the tea, but, but more than that, something else has happened to this water. It's taken on a whole new identity because this isn't a cup of water anymore. It's a cup of tea. It is different. When you let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, you absorb the nature of Christ and the flavor of Christ and the aroma of Christ, but something else happens to you too. You take on a new identity. You become a word, a, pardon me, a woman or a man of God that he has always wanted you to become. You become more and more like the author of this book. The fourth thing you need to do is you need to grow through it. Next slide. 
Word of God is planted in your heart. And it, if it finds good soil, it grows and it produces fruit. And in order to have that happen, you have to have an open and receptive heart. But you also have to have an open and receptive mind. Psalm 119, 18 says, Open my eyes that I may see the wonderful things in your law. But sometimes, you know, we can have a closed mind. We don't even give God a chance to talk to us. Sometimes we can have a superficial mind and we need to go deeper. We really do. We need to take some time with God in his word and in prayer. Go deeper. Don't let Sunday morning be it. You hear a sermon, good, bad, or indifferent, and you've forgotten it by the time you get out to the parking lot. Take some time apart from this place to delve deeper into what it meant. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes we have a preoccupied mind. We are so busy that we don't have time for what's really important. I have to tell you, if you are burning the candle at both ends, you are not going to be any brighter. In fact, the opposite is just true. I am absolutely convinced that you and I, each of us, could probably cut about half of the things that we are doing and we would feel a lot better. We would be physically healthier, mentally healthier, and spiritually healthier. Sometimes, sometimes we have a willing mind. We say to God, here I am God, teach me. I want to learn from you. I am humble. I am ready. I don't think I know it all, so God, just teach me. And I'm going to cooperate with everything you say. That willing mind is what we need. And that leads me to the fifth thing. I've got to act on it. James 1.22 says, Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. We have to be doers of the word. This one is probably the toughest. And we're not going to get there until we do the other four. Until we build on it and feed on it and live by it and grow through it, we can't act on it. Until it is instilled in us like this, we won't be doers of the word because just listening is not going to give us what we need. Just reading isn't going to be enough for life. We need to act on it. Because what you believe is what you do. Let me say that one again. What you believe is what you do. If you believe in Jesus Christ, then you will want to do what Christ does in this world. I want to challenge you. As we leave 40 days in the Word, I want to challenge you to keep on keeping on. Keep reading this in the morning. And if you haven't started, please, please try. I want to challenge you to consider how you can be doers of the word. How can you live your life so that anyone who knows you or even doesn't know you will look at you and say, hey, that's a good person. Hey, that's a Christ-like person. That everyone will know you're a Christian. What could you be doing that could be Christ for someone else? And for each of you, that's going to be something different. But I want to encourage you to think about it. It could be helping a neighbor. It could be becoming part of a team here at St. Giles so we're doing God's work together. It could be volunteering at a shelter or at community care. 
It could be with your offerings as you bring them to church each Sunday to do the work that we're doing here. It could be picking up a phone to talk to a friend who really is down or needs someone to talk to. But whatever it is, we need to be doers of the word. We need to act on it. If God's word is going to stick in our lives. Build on it. Feed on it. Live by it. Grow through it and act on it. That's how you integrate God's word into your life. Living God's word is a whole body experience. It's mind, it's eyes, it's ears, it's hands, it's mouth, it's heart. It is all of us working with God. That's how we make the word of God stick. That's how we become closer to God and let his word guide and direct our lives. Because God knows so much more and so much better than we do. Wouldn't you agree? Amen. Let's sing together, Lead Me Jesus, I Will Follow. <laughs>